This is the Ford Theater, brought to you by the Ford Motor Company, builders of Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury cars. She paid the rent. Oh, she did. She eh? paid it. She did, eh? Yeah. All right, then you sing something. No, I feel like being entertained. Uh -huh. As Biff Grimes, socially prominent Dennis, was entertained Sunday afternoon by Snappy Downer, Hillsdale's foremost fish and crab salesman. Uh -huh. Go All ahead, right. sing. Give me another drink and I'll right sing there, real good for you. Dying swan. Okay, up. how about you? Do you want one? No. Come on, come on, take another Amy, one. Amy, Amy doesn't like me to drink very much. You're not afraid of your wife, are you? I know. I'm a boss. Here. No wife tells me what to do or what not to do. When I want to drink, I drink. When I want to sing, I sing. Ha <laughs> ha! That's right. that stuff. Right. Good old All Biff right. Grimes. Sing. sing. Go ahead, sing. Over there. Oh, that's <coughs> bad. Oh, you're going to like this one. <laughs> you're going to like this one. All right, I'm ready. In a good old oh, summertime. Cut it out. In a out. good old... I don't want to hear that song. There's nothing wrong with the song. Well, it reminds me of something, and I don't want to hear it. Strolling down Did you a hear shady me? I don't want to hear that song. With my I don't want to hear it. What's the matter with it? Babe, if you don't stop that, you go out the door in your ear and I'll ah, cut it out. Take it easy, Biff. Take it easy. You're too smart for your own good. Yeah, yeah, you're getting too quick at those fists. That's kid stuff. Uh, all right, I'll sing you this. Are you ready? Yeah, Listen I'm ready. Right. Give me a note, will you? <clears throat> Give me a note. Which one? <laughs> I don't. Any, I'm not particular. Oh, okay. Do, re, mi, me, fa. Me, meet me at the Louis, Louis. Meet me, me at the fair. Don't, don't tell me the stars are shining anywhere but there. <laughs> yes, dear? You want me to come out there? You want to see my wife? No. No, no, dear, it's all right if you stay in there. Making all that racket. If I hear any more, I'll come out there and put you both out of the house. Yes, dear. Isn't that a shame? A man can't have a little peace and comfort for his wife. There ought to be a law against that. You know, for the phone. <clears throat> Look, well, tell him, uh, tell him the doctor's out, out of town. Tell him he's out. The doctor's out of town. What? <laughs> what? What do you say? Oh, uh, a man's got a tooth. Tell him to keep it, see? <laughs> No, tell him to keep it. Uh, the doctor said you're going to keep it. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. Oh, Who? Oh, it's Dick Martin from oh, across the street at the Majestic Hotel. Hello, Dick. Uh, hello, Biff. Uh, uh, Biff, I, I know it's Sunday, and I know you never work on Sundays, <clears throat> but there's a man here with a toothache. Uh, yeah. Oh, but Biff, I... Well, well look, he, he's a big banker from Oakley, and... Uh, oh, but Biff, now, listen... Let me I, talk to him. Hello, Biff. This is Hugo Barnstead. You remember me? Yeah, good. Well, Virginia and I are stopping overnight on our way home from Oakley, and darned if my teeth didn't kick up a fuss again. Yeah. Now listen, Biff, I expect you to take care of my tooth. I'll pay you anything you want. All right. All right, Hugo, you come right over, right away. Yes, well, it's right across the street from your hotel. Yeah, you bet. Goodbye. Hey, Snappy, that was Hugo Barnstead. He's coming over here to get his tooth pulled. What's Hugo doing in Hillsdale? 
Well, they're, they're stopping overnight, you see, on their way to Oak Lake. They? Yeah. You mean Virginia's with them? Virginia. Say, you were real stuck on Virginia, weren't you? That's before she married Hugo. Oh, yeah. You're the one she should have married, Rick. Yes, you bet your life I'm the one she should have married. That Hugo Barnstead, all his life, he stuck his nose around my... Now, by golly, I'm going to get even with him. You know, Snappy, there comes a time, there comes a time in, in every man's life when he's got to get even. Now, 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 not getting even warps a man. It warps him mentally and physically. How do I look? Do I look yeah. like I've been drinking? No, you look fine. I look, you look all right. Fine. Yeah, you look okay. All right. You're all right. Now, wait a minute. Kid. Now, what will Virginia say when she sees me? Are you going to, are you going to use gas on Hugo? I'm going to use gas on Now, be careful. Shut, Shut up. up. I'm getting out of no, here. No, you're not. You're going to stay here. I'll need your help. Now, go answer that. Hello, Hugo. Well, Snappy Downer. What are you doing here? I'm paying a visit to the dentist. Oh. Well, Socially. Oh. Well, Hello, Biff. Hello, well, my boy. Oh, terrible pain. It's bad, huh? It's been yeah. a long time, Hugo. Yeah, it must be 25 years. Yeah, something. So. What's right the up here, Biff, see? Oh, yeah, now just oh, a moment. It hurts like the deuce. Yeah. yeah. It's giving me a lot of trouble, that one. It mm -hmm. has? Mm-hmm. I said to Virginia I'd rather wait until I got back to Oakley to have it fixed, but she insisted I have it out now. <laughs> you know Virgie, she always has her way. Yeah. <laughs> She'll be over here in a little while, Biff. She will? That's good. Oh, I hate toothaches. Terrible things. I've had them all my life. I see. You won't hurt me, will you, Biff? No, 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 you I... won't feel anything. See, I'd like gas. Don't worry, you'll get gas. Now, which one is it? It's, it's that one right up there. Yes, yeah. Get your hands off. Yeah. Let me see there. Let me see. Oh, oh my, that'll have to come out. That'll have to come oh. out. I'll tell you what I want you to do. Come here, Snappy. Hold this. Snappy, hold this, I tell you. Hold it right there. Now, Snappy's got to help us. My girl isn't here, you know, Sunday afternoon. Just, I want you to breathe. I want you to breathe very deep. Fill up your lungs with it now. Fill it up. Breathe deep. That's it. Breathe as deep as you can. We are not getting any, are you? Are you getting any? It's been a long time, hasn't it, Biff Grimes? What? You and me, Avery's part, Virginia. Uh, <coughs> inhale. I remember it as though it were yesterday. You thought you were going to marry Virginia. But I fooled you. I fooled you, Biff Grimes. Ah, uh, Hugo Bonstead. I've got you right where I want you, you little crawling rat. What are you going to do? Listen. What? I've waited for this all my life. You breathe, you go. Breathe. Breathe. That's 25 years. 25. I can remember it as if it was yesterday. Avery's Park and Virginia. Coming in the Oak Street entrance. Well, where is he now? I don't know. He went over towards Mason's Walk. Was he alone? I think so. That is, I didn't see anybody with him. Oh. Now, Amy, that doesn't mean that he hasn't got his friend along. Well, did you tell him that you'd meet him over here? Of course I did. Why, Virginia, that's being forward. Oh, that's not being forward, I guess. If a girl tells a boy she'll meet him in Avery's Park, that's not being forward. What did you say his name was? Hugo Bonstead. Isn't that a swell name for a man? Oh, Amy, wait till you see him. And how did you happen to meet him? Well, I was in the drugstore getting a Belladonna plaster for Ma when in he comes. I knew he was looking at me because he knocked on the counter and coughed twice. Then he smiled, so I smiled. And then Amy, he winked. Virginia. Yes, he did, just like this. Oh, were you horror-stricken? <laughs> Well, for a second I was, and then I saw he was awfully good-looking, so I winked back. Virginia! Shucks, there wasn't anybody looking. What's the harm in a little wink if a fellow's good-looking? Oh. It didn't hurt him. But how could you? Amy, a girl's got to be up to date nowadays. How are you going to get a bow if you don't wink at him? It's brazen. Well, well, he waited outside for me, and we walked down Meadow Street together. He had vanilla on him, and it smelled so nice. But go on. Well, then he said, what's your name? And I didn't tell him, because that would be brazen. So I said, what's yours? And he said, Hugo Bonstead. 
And then he said, can I meet you next Saturday afternoon in Avery's Park? Gee. And I said, well, I don't see why you couldn't. And he said, I've got a friend. Have you got one? And I said, yes, thinking of you, of course. Oh. And then he said, my friend is awful swell, looking real handsome. Oh, God. <laughs> But he couldn't be any sweller looking than Hugo. Hugo is the swellest looking thing in the world. Virginia, hmm? I'm afraid. Of what? Well, I never met a boy like this before. That is, without a proper introduction. Why, if my mother knew... Well, what about my mother? Yes, but my mother's worse than your mother, Virginia. Why, if she knew I was over here in Avery's Park flirting with the boys... You aren't flirting. We're over here, aren't we? Well, you can't call that flirting. Shucks, talking to a couple of harmless boys certainly isn't flirting. Well, but Virginia, you know what my mother is. You know what would happen to me if she found out? What? Church twice next Sunday. Oh, Amy. Mm. But you don't have to tell her you were over here, do you? No, of course not, but, but Ma loves to snoop. Amy, you're the biggest Brady cat I know yes, of. Yes, but there are no buts. We're here and you'll have to meet this fella. Well, all right. Just this once. Good. You suppose he's a nice looking fellow? Of course he is. Think he'll like my new dress? No, he will. Think he'll like me? <laughs> Fall in love with you the minute he sees you. Now, Virginia, you stop that. Don't you talk like that. Well, he might. You never can tell. And you might fall in love with him. Why, Virginia, I'd die. If you fell in love with a boy? I'd fall down and die right in the spot. That's because you're weak, Amy. No, I'm not, but I just couldn't stand it. I'd like to fall in love. I want to see what it feels like. I'd die right on this spot. Amy, tell me the truth. Weren't you ever in love with a boy? Why, Virginia. Go on, you can tell me. I won't tell anybody. Honest? Cross my heart. Well, I... I thought I was once. Oh, I don't know. Well, maybe it was love. I don't know, but... When I was in school, there was a boy. Go on. Oh, I don't know. He never looked at me, and, and I never... Oh, but Virginia, did you ever have a feeling in your heart? A feeling like, like something's going to happen, and it doesn't? Well, that's the way my heart was. Oh, it wasn't love, I know that. He never even noticed me. I could have been a stick in the mud as far as he was concerned. But Virginia, this boy always seemed lonely somehow. Everybody had it in for him, even the teachers. He was a redhead and sort of hot-tempered. He wasn't too big, but he'd fight at the drop of a hat. Oh, I guess I can see why people didn't like him, but... But I saw him do a lot of good things. Why, when the big boys picked on the little ones, he helped the little fellas out. I know he had a lot of good in him. Good that nobody else could see. And that's why Who my Who was this boy, Amy? Oh, well, you wouldn't know him. Well, I might. Well, it was... Fifth Grimes. Fifth Grimes? You mean that roughneck that hangs out at Goldstein's drugstore? Yes. Why, Amy, he's terrible. The reputation. I'd be ashamed to even mention his name. I heard that he drinks and smokes cigarettes. Oh, well, of course, that was a long time ago. Shucks, I'm all over it now. Why, he doesn't even know I'm alive. But Amy, you couldn't possibly be Virginia, sitting with a boy like that then. Yes, it is. Oh, Virginia, what does the other fellow look like? Tell me quick. I don't know. I can't quite see yet. <gasps> My heaven. Oh, he must be terrible. Amy, do you know who that other fellow is? Well, how would I know? I'm not looking that way. It's Biff Grimes. Biff Grimes? Yes, that's who it is. It's Biff Grimes. Oh, Virginia, I can't sit here. Well, you can't go now. But why? Because they've seen oh. us. Virginia, what'll I do? <laughs> uh, do nothing. Just sit where you are. Don't you feel frightened? Oh, my heart is jumping a little. Mine's just her plunking all over. Now, listen to me. We won't say a word to them. Just let them pass. Of course, if they say something, we'll say something. And if they don't say anything, we won't say anything. No, just drop your eyes. Drop my eyes? Yes, that'll show them that we're good girls and they can't trifle with oh. us. All right. Let me know when they get here. Here they are. Oh, oh Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be thy there they are. Yes, I see them. Swell, huh, Biff? They're swell. Now, which is the one you picked for me? The little one on the far yeah, side. Yeah, nothing doing. Well, she isn't so bad. She's skidoo. If you can't pick better than that for me, why, Biff Grimes does his own picking. Now, wait a minute, Biff. No, I picked the other one. Well, that isn't fair. 23. 
Everything's fair to Biff Grimes. Now, I've always wanted to meet this one. She's duck soup for me. She's all the fudge. Oh, gee. Now, well, I got it. her first. All right, I'll fix it. Come on. <laughs> Uh, say something, some, say something. Give me time. Hello. 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 <laughs> nice afternoon. Yes. Yes. Say, say something familiar. If the sun wasn't out, well, it'd be a nice afternoon anyway, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> say something. They don't care about the sun. That's the way I start my conversations. They think you're up to date if you can talk about something in general. Now listen, they don't want to hear about that. They just want to meet me. This, I'd like to introduce my friend. Sure. This is Biff Grimes. Hi. How uh, do you do? Hi. Uh, let me see. Your name is Virginia. Isn't that right? How did you know my name was Virginia? Oh, I found out. Oh, told you. Oh, somebody. Who <laughs> was that somebody? No, never you mind. <laughs> Crazy to know. I'll bet you are. Who told you? That's for you to find out, little girl. That's for you to find out. We men don't tell everything we know. How about that, Hugo? That's right, Bill. That's right. I guess we could tell you a lot of things if we wanted to, huh, Hugo? You betcha. Yeah, gee, I was just saying... What did you say your friend's name was? Oh, I forgot. I was so interested in finding out who told you my name. This is Miss Lynn, Amy Lynn. How do you uh, This is Mr... Uh, Barnstead. Of course. Hugo My Barnstead. name is Grimes, Biff Grimes. Miss Lynn? <clears throat> Mr. Grimes? No, no, mister, just plain Biff. How do you do? Say, I know you, don't I? That's right. Now, let's see, where, where did we, uh, oh, it, where did I meet? It was the John Marshall High School. That's right, the John... Oh, I remember you was a funny-looking little girl. Oh, was I? Yeah, you sure was. You, <laughs> you remember the red flannel drawers you used to wear? <laughs> well, she did. And you remember, you used to help me with lessons. I never could do arithmetic. Gee, I forgot to thank you. Oh, that's all right. Well, I thank you now, anyway. Well, even if you was funny looking, you had a good heart. I always liked you, Biff. Hey! Well, oh, I guess I shouldn't have said that. Well, at least you could have waited. I guess all the girls were stuck on me in those days. Of course, now there's only one girl that I'd like to have stuck on me now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you want some uh, gumdrops? I don't care for gumdrops, thank you. No, these are fresh-made gumdrops. No, thank you. You're the first girl ever turned Biff Grimes down on gumdrops. Some whorehound candy? Oh, uh, yes. I like that kind. And <laughs> for you? No, thank you. I want to show you something. You seen this one? Now, look, you just hold it like that, you see? Now, watch it carefully. There you are. Golly! Well, that's wonderful, Bill. That's nothing. I guess there isn't room for two more of us to sit down here. No, there isn't. There might be a little room over here. No, there isn't any four people can't sit on this bench, well, and might, you know it. That might be too tight a squeeze, huh, Hugo? <laughs> <laughs> Biff is right there when it comes to the up-to-date jokes. Yeah, I guess I don't read the Police Gazette for nothing. Well, huh? I think I'd better go home. Oh, no. Huh? Uh, uh, maybe you'd like to take a little walk. Uh, yes, we'll take a little walk. Then maybe an ice cream soda wouldn't go bad. Would you like an ice cream soda, Amy? I like a lemon sauce. They got something new down at Goldstein's at a drugstore. I just tried it yesterday. Now, they say New York is just crazy about yes? it. Yes? You know, if New York's crazy about something, it must be good. What is it? He puts nuts. He spreads nuts all over the ice cream. Oh, no, I've man. never heard of that. that. Nuts? Did you? Yeah, all that, oh, that Goldstein, he, he isn't dead. And Biff Grimes doesn't let the grass grow under his feet either. I'm New York style. That's me every time. <clears throat> i tell you something, little, uh, uh, Virginia, that's your name, isn't it? You know what? I like that name. You know where it came from? It came from the state of Virginia. That's where Abraham Lincoln came from. Now, there's very few people know that. I knew it. I see. Well, you just take that little girl and go ahead. We'll be right with you. All right, Biff. <clears throat> I've always wanted you to take me to Goldstein, Mr. Bonstead. You have? Yes. <laughs> I don't mind if you take me, Mr. Grimes. What? Sure. <coughs>
just give me a sign of longer or three. If I don't want to drink it, then force it on me. The rhyme may be fine, while the coal steins were mine. Down where the worst burger flows. Hey. Lager or three. If I don't want to drink it, then force it on me. <laughs> the rhyme may be fine, but for me, a cold stein. Down where the wet burger flows. You like that, huh? How about uh, you and I getting a canoe and paddling over to the island, huh? <laughs> My mother wouldn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Oh, no, 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 that's my rights on the house. Oh. <laughs> Yes, it is. But there's nothing to worry about, as long as McKinley is in the White House. Really? Well. Miss Grimes, I want to tell you something. I'm a respectable girl, and I'm not in the habit of going out to people that want to fight. Look, will you give me a chance to explain? There's nothing to explain. No, I didn't start the fight, did I? Yes, you did. No, I didn't. No, I'm not going to stand around and take an insult. That boy didn't say anything. He did, Virginia. Now, I heard what he said. When Biff Grimes takes his best girl to a picnic, he's not going to hear anybody make any remarks. But, Biff, but I heard what he said. Aren't you gentleman enough to ignore it? I'm gentleman enough to take a poke at him. Well, if you ever do it again, I'll walk away from you. That's what I'll do. Hello, Hi, Biff. Hi, Virginia. Virginia. Hello, Biff. Oh, hello. Well, a house doesn't need to fall on us. Gee, well, I, I am sorry, Virginia, honest. You know, when I hit anybody, I, I don't really know about it till after I've done it. But if I hurt your feelings, I'm sorry. Because I am crazy about you, Virginia. Hi, Hi Jim. Jim. Hello. Hey. See, I could have any girl that I wanted, but I'm just crazy about you and I won't I'm do it. I'm not in the least bit interested. Oh, look, there's an excursion going over to Lexington next Sunday. And it only, it only costs a dollar and a quarter. I thought maybe you'd like to go. There's lots of swell scenery. Sorry, but I have an important engagement on Sunday. What's that, more important than me? I should say it is. Oh, I thought I was your steady. Well, you've got another thought coming. Come on. Listen, you don't own me, Biff Grimes. Besides, you're not exactly my ideal. Well, now, who is your ideal? Hugo Barnstead? Suppose he is. Say, I bet he is. I bet not. you can't fool me. You've been seeing him all the time. Suppose I have. Well, I won't stand for that. And what are you going to do about it? Well, he better keep away from me. I don't like him. He's a sneak. Hugo Bonstead is a perfect gentleman, which is something you are not. If I want to meet him, that's my business. Well, behind my back, that little sneak, he, Hugo Bonstead won't cut me out. You tried to cut him out. When did I? That day in Avery's Park. Well, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. Listen to the little boy talk. I thought you were a man, Mr. Grimes. I've heard of the great things you're going to do. So far, I haven't seen anything. Well, aren't I working hard to be a dentist? Oh, a dentist. Hello, Virginia. Hello, Virginia. Hello, Hello. You go. Hello, Amy. Well, come on, everybody, oh. sit down. Oh, How are you? Get out of here. Oh, thank you. Here you are. Thank you. That's right. Hello. I stopped by your house. Your mother said you were out. So you brought Amy. <laughs> Yes, we'll get him this time. You bet. I'll start it. Biff, there's that boy you hit. I think we'd better go. What for? Because, remember what I told you about fighting. Funny how a cute girl takes up with such rough people. Don't pay any attention to them, Biff. Which girl are you referring to? Why, the dark-haired one. Ain't she some cutie? Guess I could do more than chuckle her under the chin. What's that last thing What about? Will you stand up? What for? I want to see how hard I can knock you down. Right, you come back. Come on. <laughs> this cutie tells her what to do. You want to get up, huh? <laughs> come on, get up. Oh, Biff, he's got a knife. What kind of a fight? What are you going to do about it? Well, I'm uh, playing with knives, huh? Come on, you're next now. Please, I, 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 
I want you not to fight in here. I didn't start it. He started it. He's each, got an, each time you come in, there is trouble here. No. You, out you go. Come on, boys. Throw him no, out. No, no. Take your hands away from me. I'm going. Well, what are you doing? Go back to me. Well, play something. Come on. Let's get out of here. No, please. I never want to see you again, Biff Grimes. I, I hate you. You're a roughneck, an uncouth roughneck. Uh, I'll meet you at Avery Park Wednesday night at 8. Well, Biff Grimes. Uh, meet you at... Well, so long, Biff. All right, come, come and go. Go ahead, dance it, Come on. Don't forget about that. No, go. All right, will you play something, will you? May I have this next dance, Miss Brush? I certainly, Mr. Bonstead. Excuse us, Amy. I want to talk to you, Virginia. Yes, you go. I saw my uncle today. And? What we expected has happened. Oh, Hugo. Sit down, Virginia. I'm being taken into the business. Someday the Ajax box factory will be mine. No. I'll be a rich man, Virginia. Oh, congratulations, Hugo. Of course, it'll take perseverance. I've got to start at the bottom and learn the business. Well, isn't that all right? Oh, yes. Except that the bottom is the paper mill in Toledo. I've got to work there for a few years. Oh, I see. So you see, Virginia, I don't know whether to ask you what I said I'd ask you. Maybe your father won't let you marry me and take the train to Toledo on Wednesday night? Wednesday? You mean this Wednesday? Well, you know how impatient my uncle is. Rush, rush, rush. He even sings hymns in a hurry. But you go that day after tomorrow. I know it. He wanted me to leave today. But there's so much to do. Well, maybe Amy could help you. I know she would, but I still don't see how I could get ready in time. Golly. Well, yes, I... Yes, it is impractical. Hugo, I don't like to think of you all alone in Toledo. Come on, we're going to see Father. Wednesday will be here before we know it. Why, for you? You know, I don't mind her insulting me. It, so much as the way she did it. Now, I was only trying to protect her good name. Of course, Biff. Anyway, when I hit somebody, I don't mean anything. Afterwards, I feel very sorry. I'd do anything to help Folks, I know people say that I'm a scrapper, but that isn't right. I've just learned how to protect myself. <clears throat> when I was a kid, my pop used to say to me, a lot of fellas in this town and they're bigger than you are. So you hit them first and you ask them afterwards what it is they wanted. Oh, you went for Virginia? Yeah, she's supposed to meet me here at 8 o'clock. This is Wednesday. Yes, but it's after 9 now. Yeah, I know. I. Yes. Too bad she's late. Don't I know it? Say, how'd you happen to be here tonight? Oh, I don't know. I just came over. Did you have a date or no. something? I thought maybe you and, and Hugo Barnes. Hugo Barnes? Yeah. Why, no. He took me out once. He doesn't care anything about me. You know, he's an awful fool. I don't see what any girl can see in him. Oh, Hugo's all mm. right. Quarter mm. past nine. Virginia isn't coming. Yeah, I guess you're right. I wonder if we didn't meet here. No, no, she was only fooling. She just wanted to see how I'd take it. Hugo Barnstead, a girl just couldn't look at him. It's a nice night. Beautiful. This time of night, things seem still and quiet. What, yeah? Soon fall will be here. There. Then winter. I don't like it. No? No. I get awfully lonesome when winter comes. Do you? Amy? Yes. You know, I know how you feel, because I get lonesome, too. Do you, Bill? Yeah, I... You're not funny, us... What? Us sitting here talking like this. Don't you like it? Sure, I like it. I've always wanted somebody to talk to. You know, I got feelings, too. I can't always express them. We're at my house. Now, there's, there's just... The kid brothers and my, my old man and, and me. Now, my dad, he can't work much. I have to do most of the hustling. And Wednesday, well, about next Wednesday, I'm going to get a job at the Ajax box. But most of that money will go to my dental school. Did you know I was going to be a... Oh, are you yeah, I'm going to be the best little molar extricator. There's an extricator, you see? Oh, well, that'll be fine. Anyway. That's just to start, though. After that, I'm going to be the man of the town. Gee.
Well, about next Wednesday, I'm going to get a job at the Ajax Box Factory. Cause most of that money will go to my dental school. Did you know I was going to be a dentist? No, are you? Yeah, I'm going to be the best little molar extricator in this town. There's an oh. extricator, you see? Oh, well, that'll Not be a, fine. No, this way. Oh. That's just to start, though. After that, I'm going to be the mayor of the town. Gee, this. And I guess that'll make, that'll make Virginia proud of me. Oh, yes, but... Gosh, maybe she won't. Well, hi, Bev. Hi, Amy. Amy. hi, Bev. Well, what are you doing here, Snappy? Uh, taking Lily and Russell off for a walk. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, good, Lily. I uh, guess you heard the news, didn't you? What, what news? I guess he don't know. Honest Jane heard? Well, I've been kind of busy. Well, go on and tell him. Oh, you'll die when you what? hear it. Didn't you hear about Virginia? No. She got married this afternoon at 4 o'clock to Hugo Barnstead. <laughs> she did? I thought you knew you, you was going together, wasn't you? I heard something about it. Uh, it's all over town. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got bust. Gee, I certainly worked hard to fix it up for that fellow. Gosh, and all the time I thought she was yours, Ted. What, Virginia? No, she's just a nice little girl, that's all. <laughs> well, I guess everybody thought that I was stuck on her. No, I wasn't. That was just my little joke. Now, you tell the gang. That Biff Grimes, he's living his own life. He's kind of walking clean. Sure, Biff, sure. I, I saw you go this afternoon. He, he's going to work for his uncle in Toledo. Got a swell job. Yeah. And he and the happy bride are taking the midnight. We're all go, going down and, and throw rice and everything at them. Oh. And say, uh, wow. I hear they got a lower sleeper. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, come on. Uh, I'll be seeing you, Biff. So long, Biff. So long? I don't think he knew a thing about it. Oh, gee. Oh. That's all right, Bill. Oh. I know it. It hurts, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess it does. Sure it does. Feels like your heart is all cut open and bruised. I know. Do you know, Amy? Yes. When he climbs into that sleeper, I hope he breaks his leg. Oh, Biff, you mustn't say well, that. Well, I do. Biff, you mustn't. Say you're sorry, please. All right. I'm sorry. Gee, you're the first girl that ever made me take back anything. I'm glad you're here, Amy. If I ask you something, would you mind? Why, what is it, Biff? Well, could I be your steady? Do you want to? Yeah. All right, Biff. Well, we'll meet over here in the evenings. Yes. I, I better go. I kind of feel like being alone. Sure you do, Biff. Night's night. About a million stars. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Dipper, look at that. It stands out just as clear. Good night. Good night, Bill. Would, would you like to kiss me? Ain't that enough gas, Biff? No, it ain't. Not for Hugo. Here are fashion leaders for early summer 1949. First, a broad-brimmed sailor hat and rough natural color straw trimmed with a black band, specially created by Christian Dior, New York. Here is a striking suit designed by Castillo of Elizabeth Arden. Gray wool with a black velvet collar and an unusual modern skirt treatment, draped in front with a dramatic panel in back. And a gay evening gown, made for important evenings by Fira Benenson. Yards and yards of gray silk tulle topped off with a pleated bodice. And here is another fashion leader, the leader in automobile fashion, the fashion car of the year, the 1949 Ford. Yes, the recognized leader. Because of its beautiful styling and advanced design, the 1949 Ford was officially chosen by the famous Fashion Academy of New York. After examining all cars in all price ranges, members of the Academy awarded the gold medal to the 49 Ford as the fashion car of the year. On any street, or any road, at any time of day, or night, in any model, closed or open, this is the fashion car of the year, 
the 1949 Ford. When you look at the new Ford, you'll see the difference. And when you drive it, you'll feel the difference. Now for the second act of One Sunday Afternoon, starring Burgess Meredith and Hume Cronin. Phil, listen to me. Why can't you let bygones be bygones? No, Snappy. There are too many things I remember. Phil. Yeah, so I'll help you with the dishes in just a minute, dear. I'm all through with them, Mr. Grimes. Well, that's too bad. You see, I was just going to give you a hand. They're washed and wiped, Mr. Grimes. Thank you. I was just saying to myself, I was just saying... What? Uh, well... Oh, way I... Biff Grimes, what am I going to do with you? We've been married for three years, and I don't believe you've heard a single word I've said in all that time. Yes, I have. Well, what did I say? Woof. Oh, yeah. Biff. <clears throat> Well, if I put up with it this long, I suppose I can put up with it a little I longer. I guess so. Now, come on, put your books away. Why? We're having company. Company? Look, I've got to study. You don't get born to be a dentist. You've got to study. Oh, now, Biff, you've been at the factory all day long. You need to relax a little. No, I can't afford to relax. I've got all, all those bills due and all the payments due on the furniture. Now, the sooner I get my, my dental certificate, the sooner we'll be out of the red. I know, Biff, but this is a special occasion. All right, who's coming? Hugo and Virginia Barnstead. Hugo and Virginia? Yes. They, after all these years, they just moved back to town from Toledo. I met Virginia on the street today. Hugo's going to be in full charge of the factory. He isn't. Yes. How do you like that? Me working for Hugo Barnstead. Oh, now, Biff, you never can tell. He, he might do something nice for you. Oh. oh, that must be them now. Oh, for heaven's sake, Biff, put those teeth away. Oh. Hello, Amy. How are you? Hello, Amy. So glad to see you. Well, take off your things. Thank you. I'll just put my hat here. All right. Come on in. Biff, here's Hugo and Virginia. Hello, Biff. Hello there, Hugo. Well, Mr. Grimes, this is a pleasure. Yes. I believe I knew you in the old days. Yes. You're looking marvelous. Well, so you. More handsome than ever. Well, uh, fancy the four of us being here after four long years. Yes. Well, sit down, everybody. Now, we can only stay a few minutes, Amy. Nice little place you have here, Amy. Well, it's comfortable anyway. You're both looking awfully well. Thanks. Don't you think yes, so, Yes, I do. Well, tell us about yourselves. What have you been doing? Nothing much. Hugo's been busy learning the business, and we've been traveling around a good deal. Went to New York last week and heard Caruso. Oh, Amy, he's marvelous. He's the best opera singer I ever heard. Yes, everyone says he's good. Well, where are you going to live, Virginia? I think we'll take one of those apartments up on Chestnut Hill. You know the new ones that they're putting up. Yes, I, we looked at them Sunday. Really? I, I think we'll rent one of those when I get my diploma. Mm -hmm. Diploma? <laughs> oh, that's right. You're studying to be a dentist, weren't you? Yeah. Guess it's a pretty long pull, eh? Oh. Guess it's only got six months to go, Hugo. Ah, oh, good. Perhaps I'll be your first patient, Mr. Grimes. I'll need all I can get. You'll be sure of Hugo. He's been having lots of trouble with his teeth lately. Good. No, thanks. Not for me. No novice for me. I'll need a fellow who knows his business. Now, don't worry. I'll know my business. Well, I hear Hugo's going to be the big boss at the factory. Yes, I'm to be in full charge. That's what I heard. <laughs> we'll be seeing a good deal of one another at the factory. I suppose so. <clears throat> Two things I want to talk over with you, Biff. Mm. You know, Biff, my uncle isn't satisfied with the way things are going. Oh, no. Oh. Sorry. Look at that, he broke. Well, I can fix it. My uncle isn't satisfied with the way things are going at the factory. He says we've got to make some more money. He expects me to double the output and cut expenses. Oh. So you see, Biff, I've got a scheme a bit. Maybe you could help me out. I might be able to do a little something for you later on. Don't you worry about it, Hugo. I mean it. I'd be glad to do something for you and Amy. Well, thanks. Not at all. Make a boss out of your husband yet, Mrs. Grimes. Yes. Make him give up this silly idea of being a dentist and become a businessman. Oh, no, Hugo. Oh, but Hugo Biff wants to be a dentist, not a box maker. Please, Virginia, I know mm. what I'm talking about. I'm going to drag Biff and Amy out of all this. But Hugo. I'm quite happy, Hugo. Why don't you let me worry about Amy, Hugo? Forget your pride, Biff. You work along with me and you can make some more money. Now, well, what do you want me to do? My uncle informs me that too many of the men are laying off sick. That's what they say. I'm going to put a stop to that. Ajax Box Factory's paying its help to work, not to be sick. 
I had to clean that place out. Too much dead wood. Well, I always thought the men were pretty good workers. Well, they aren't. Now, look, Biff, you mingle with the men. You could keep your eyes open and see what's going on. I, what do you mean? Well, for instance, this department where you work. Yeah. Some of the men are on the job, I suppose. Others aren't. I want you to report them to me. Tell me, Biff, who would you suggest I fire first? <laughs> you want me to be a monkey in the clover for you? It's foolish to take that point of view. A spy work, huh? You see, Virginia, that's what I get when I try and help them out. I didn't ask you to help me out. Now, if you came around here to, to, to make a sneak out of me, why don't you get out? And now he's insulting me, and without any reason. Oh, no, Hugo, you don't understand. Oh, I understand, oh, all right. Stop it, Hugo. I think you've made a fool out of yourself. You keep out of this, Virginia. Well, I think that Biff Grimes is too stubborn for his own good. Yeah, I think I'll take a sock at you. Biff, for heaven's sake. And that's another thing you better get over. Hitting people. You're too old for that now. It's going to get you into trouble one of these oh, days. Oh, you'll be still, Hugo. Oh, what's the sense of talking to a man without any brains? I'm going. Come on, Virginia. Oh, now, Hugo, wait a minute. I'm sorry, Amy. I've been through this a dozen times before, and this is the last time. Good. Hugo's awfully mad. That's all right. I can handle him. Good night, Amy. Hi. How do you like that? That Hugo putting on airs like that. Give me six months more, and I'll I'll say goodbye to Hugo and to the Ajax box factory. That's the stuff. That means we'll have to work harder than ever. That means we'll make every nickel count. I can attend to that, Biff. Yes, I know you can. We'll get an apartment. You see, right up there in Chestnut Hill. Right beside him. Now, you wait and see. Thanks. I expect you to remedy it and carry out the policy that I have laid down. Yours sincerely, et cetera, et cetera. All right, Miss Collins, you can send Grimes in. Yes, Mr. Bonstead. And Miss Collins, I don't want to be disturbed. Yes, sir. You may go in now, Mr. Collins. Come in, Biff, come in. Me? Yes, sit down. All right. Here, have a cigar. No, no, what, what's on your mind? Well, now it's about that little job I mentioned the other evening. You know, Biff, I happen to know you're a little strapped for cash. How'd you like to find something extra in your pay envelope every week? Help out with those dentistry lessons, wouldn't it? Yes, it would, but I'm no sneak. Biff, my uncle expects me to deliver the goods. Now, either you've got to help me out, or I've got to get somebody else to do it. Then you'll get somebody else. I still think it's a bad idea going around spying on your man. You made up your mind? Well, yes. That's too bad, Biff. <laughs> Is that all you wanted to see me about? No, there's one other little thing. Yes? I hate to do this, but you leave me no way out. I had no business telling you about my plan to check up on the man. But since you know all about it and you're not in on it, I can't have you working here. What, what, what's that? I'm sorry, Biff. I'll see you around sometime. You mean that I'm fired? Well, as far as I'm concerned, Biff, you quit. Oh, no, I didn't quit. I need this job. When you turned down my offer, you quit. It was your choice. I'm sorry. Now, look, you go. You see the... Amy and I are counting on this, and there's only six months more. Well, if you want to change your mind, I... Uh... No. No, is that the way you feel about it? All right, all right. Wait, I've, I've got 11 days' pay coming to me. That is $23.65. You can give it to oh, me. Oh, no, me you've got nothing coming to you. You quit, and that's that. Listen, I've got 11 days' pay, and I want it now. Do you understand? Take your hands off me. You give me what's owed me. Do you understand? Look here, Grant. You give me that. Uh... $4. There's your change. There's your change. Oh. Collins! Miss Collins! Yes, Mr. Barnstead? Send for the police. The police? Yes, the police. Well, don't just stand there. Bonstead's wallet. Yes, but it was only $23.65, just what was owed me. I never stole from anybody in my life. Mm. And I suppose you never in your life struck anybody either, Mr. Bonstead or anyone else, is that right? Well, I got excited, that's the way it was, and then there was a tussle. Well, did you strike Mr. Bonstead? No, I can't say that I struck Did Mr. you or didn't you? Yes. And you took money from his wallet? Yes. That's all. All the 
Benjamin Grimes, the jury has found you guilty of felonious assault and robbery. It is therefore my duty to sentence you to from two to five years at hard labor in the state penitentiary. And I sincerely hope this will teach you to respect the persons and property of others. Come along now. Come on. Biff, dear, I hope this finds you well and accustomed to your surroundings as much as you can be. I hope you will try not to be bitter, Biff. Remember that we still have our whole lives ahead of us. Biff, darling, our prayers have been answered. Dr. Whipple says that you can complete your studies at Dental College when you come home. Please write and tell me when you go before the parole board. I'm so excited about it, I hardly listen to a word anyone says to me. Oh, good evening, miss. Hello, Amy. Is it really you? Yes. I was just on my way up to the house. I got off at the junction. I could have gone downtown to the station. I didn't want anybody to see me. I know. Anyway, I thought that maybe you'd be here. I don't know, something told me, just something. Isn't it nice here? It's spring. Yes. Smells good, the earth, trees, everything waking up, new life coming in. I got out. At 12 o'clock today, and the warden was very nice to me, and he said, <clears throat> Are you glad to see me? You know I am, Biff. Gee, it feels good to see you. Feels good to be back. That's two years. It seems more like ten. Biff, I'm so glad to see you. I think I... I'd have gone all to pieces if I hadn't got your letters. There's somehow the idea of your working and waiting. It's somehow... It's all right, Biff. <clears throat> well, I thank you for your goodness and your kindness. That's all right, Biff. Gee, are you all right, Amy? Huh? Yes, I'm all right. It was just seeing you. Sure, I understand. You know that I learned a lot when I was away? Yes. At first I felt, I felt so low that I didn't think I could stand it. And then I got to thinking I was locked up there. And I got to thinking that it is the same moon and the same stars and the same rain that comes down on all of us. It doesn't know whether you're a crook or an angel and it doesn't care just says, here I am, I'm yours, what are you going to do about it? So a lot of fellas come out of jail and they're, they're beat, you know. But I'm not beat, oh, I'm far from it. Oh, I'm glad, Biff. You know, it's quiet now. Yes. I think we'll have to move out of this town, though. All right, Biff. Maybe we could try Hillsdale. All right. Mm -hmm. It's okay with you? Wherever you go, Biff, I'll go. So this big thing's coming up for us. I can, I can feel that in my bones. There'll be nothing too good for Biff Grimes and his wife. God, it feels good. I'm sorry. You want to go home? Yes. Yeah. Oh, and I love you. I love your hair and your eyes and your lips. I love you too, Biff. Should we walk home? Yes. Biff, don't do anything you'll be sorry for. 
If Grimes never does anything he's sorry for. I'm thinking of Amy. Chetwood and his auto daredevil. are stock model 1949 Fords just like the ones you see on the road every day. They have the power, balance, and durability to do the stunts you've seen because they are designed and built to do far more than the ordinary driver will ever demand. And Ford tests constantly to make sure that all Ford cars measure up to high standards. On the Ford test track at Dearborn, stock models are run for hours at high speeds, 70, 80, 90 miles per hour. New 49 Fords are put through torturing body and spring tests. Hill tests on a grade equaling the steepest roads and streets in the country. tests, slamming on the brakes at 60 time after time. Water tests. tests of extreme cold and heat. These are just a few of the tests which make sure that 49 Fords conform to high and rigid standards, checks on the careful precision manufacturing that builds amazing performance and durability into 49 Fords. We don't recommend that you drive like this, but if you're that good a driver, Ford's that good a car. When you drive a Ford, you'll feel the difference. third act of One Sunday Afternoon. You fixed me. Two years in jail and Amy. And that's what I'll never forgive you for, Amy. Don't do it, Biff. Please you don't should... do it. You shut up. I know what I'm doing. You should have let well, me help. Well, if it isn't my old time sweet on himself. Is that Virginia? Hey, up. It's me. In the flesh. <laughs> Hello, snappy Donna. <laughs> Lost a little hair, haven't you? I would never have recognized you. Really? Well, it's been years. Yeah. Well, the old boy's kept his good looks. Remember Schneider's Gardens? Remember all that baloney you used to give me? <laughs> yeah. Here you are, the big dentist of Hillsdale. Say, have you pulled old Goofy Joe's tooth yet? What's that? Tooth. No. Tooth! I haven't pulled his tooth. Will you do me a favor? What? Put him out of his misery. Oh, no, don't say that. Open. Open now. Oh, my. <laughs> there. No way. Oxygen. Let him alone. You know, that's not a bad way to pass out. Don't say that. Hugo. Hugo, wake up. Why bother? He's half dead anyway. Wake up, Hugo. Wake up, Hugo. Hugo, wake up. You're a fool, Biff. You're a fool. Yeah. All right. Right, uh, uh, all right, Hugo. Uh, Hugo, you all right? Right. What? Uh, Will you have some water? Uh, it's hey, taste. Take that. 
Just take that down. Uh, mm. uh, you here, Virgie? Yes, nature's child. Oh. Did you think you were going to crash the pearly gate? No. You yeah, see it, Virgie, right there. Yeah, just My dentist in Pittsburgh. Listen, you, for 25 years, that's all I've heard. Yeah. You and your darn teeth. It's teeth in the morning and teeth in the afternoon and teeth at night. Now, Virgie, just Don't Virgie me. If I hear any more squawks out of you, I'll perform the operation myself. And you won't get gas. Now, Virgie, don't you talk like that. This gives people the wrong impression. So what? Just give me this. How much do I owe you, Biff? You don't owe me anything. What's that? I said nothing. I don't understand. No, I'm glad to be of service anytime. Anything you want of me, you just come around and ask me, Hugo. I'm very pleased. Oh, sure, Biff. Sure. Oh, yeah, just put that. Oh, that's all right. I'm sorry. Perhaps you'll examine me sometime, Dr. Grimes. By the way, how's your wife? She's fine. Still married or don't you work at it? <sighs> Mrs. Grimes is still Mrs. Grimes. How she stood it. You'll never know what I've suffered, married to this death house buzzard. Oh, that dear? I'm going to write to my dentist in Pittsburgh. I think it's a oh, disgrace. Oh, shut up. You, you and your dentist it. in Pittsburgh. I'm going home. What's that? I'm going yeah, home. Bye. Thanks, man. I don't feel so good. No, thanks. Some oxygen. Some oxygen. Oh. Oh. Let's take a drink. Go. Mm. Oh, Amy, I'm sorry. You ought to be ashamed of I yourself, am, thinking am. and making such a racket. Yes, Where's Snappy? He's gone now. Where did you get this whiskey, young man? Oh, that, I had it here. Now, I don't mind your taking a drink, Biff, but you make such a fool of yourself. Oh, I do, ma'am. You I... ready to go out? Yes, sir. Well, I change have... your coat. Sunday afternoon, everybody out. I'll go. Oh, mm. you know, Amy, that you are the sweetest and most beautiful lady in the whole world and that, that I love you very much. I love you. And you know, you know that new car that you wanted? Well, I'm going to get you even a better one. You're going to have the best car in Hillsdale. Oh, if our old car is getting terrible looking. I wouldn't let you be seen in it. And there's something else. You know, across the street, there's a brand new taxi. Well, you and I are going for a ride in it. It's still there. Hey, taxi! Drive around the front door. Biff Grimes and his best girl going for a ride. Okay, right. Hey, Biff. Biff, put my skirt down. Oh, no. Let him look. Biff Grimes' girl got the best legs in town. Included in our cast, Gaines Sullivan, Claire Kirby, William Brower, Dorothy Duckworth, Martin Tarby, Peggy Cass, Willard Swire, E.A. Crumschmidt, Charles Mendick, Alan Dreben, 